The verses that are being recited upon us are from Surah Al-Isra. And there is an invitation in the Quran. قَالَ رَبُّنَا وَقُلْ لِعِبَادِي يَقُولِ الَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنِ and tell my servants to say only that which is best. تسمع في القرآن ربك يقول قولا كريما قولا ميسورا قولا سديدا قولا له قولا لينا And throughout the Quran there is an invitation to practice a specific type of speech. Words that are kind, words that are honorable, words that are correct, words that are comforting. Maysura. As believers, we are invited to celebrate the gift of speech. One of the most beautiful blessings that we human beings have been blessed with is the ability to communicate and the ability to share words with one another. يقول نبينا صلى الله عليه وسلم من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليقل خيرا أو ليصمت والله هذا من أصعب الأحاديث تطبيقا The Prophet of Allah says let he who believes in Allah he or she who believes in Allah and the day of judgment let them be such that they only say that which is good or that they remain silent. Because words have power. Words can either lift our spirits or they can absolutely crush our spirits. Bilkalam. And that is why, for example, in the hadith, Mu'adh ibn Jabal says, قَالْ كُنْتُ مَعَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ فِي سَبَثَرٍ وَكُنَّا نَسِيرُ فَاقْتَرَبْتُ مِنْهِ He said that, Mu'adh ibn Jabal narrates, and he said that I was with the Prophet of Allah doing some traveling, and he said that we were walking and I came close to him in proximity, فَقُلْتُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ دُلَّنِي عَلَى عَمَلٍ يُقَرِّبُنِي مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ وَيُبَعِدُنِي مِنَ النَّارِ And I said, Prophet of Allah, tell me about something, something to do that will get me closer to heaven and keep me a distance, far away from hell. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ أَمَا وَأَنَّكَ قَدْ سَأَلْتَ عَنْ عَظِيمٍ And then the Prophet of Allah said, you have indeed asked about something that's very awesome and tremendous. And in the hadith, the Prophet of Allah gives different instructions. And then he said, وَمَلَاكُ هَذَا كُلِّهِ He said, and the most important element in all of this is, أَمْسِكْ عَلَيْكَ لِسَانَكَ Hold on to your tongue. Which was very surprising to Mu'az. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, Awa muhasabuna nahnu ala ma naqool. He said, Prophet of Allah, will we really be held accountable for statements that we utter? It's just words. It's just speech. Kalam farigh. It's just words. فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ثكلتك أمك يا Mu'az. He says, Mu'az, what have you done? Your mother's lost you. What is... What are you saying? هل يكب الناس على مناخرهم ألا على جباههم في النار إلا بسبب بسبب حصائد ألسنتهم أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said that do you not know that the biggest reason as to why most people end up in the hellfire is because of what they have been uttering, what they have been saying. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن الرجل لا يتفوه بالكلمة. لا يلقي لها بالا. He said that a man or a woman will utter a word, not paying much attention to it. Allah will be so pleased with it. Allah will be so pleased with that person for uttering a word that they were not really paying much attention to it. وإن الرجل لا يتفوه بالكلمة لا يلقي لها بالا فيبلغ بها من سخط الله إلى يوم القيامة. And then I said that a man will utter a word, not paying much attention to it, and Allah will be so displeased with that word until the day of judgment. I say, wait a minute. If both people were not paying attention, this person is not paying attention, he gets the pleasure of Allah. This person is not paying attention, he gets the wrath of Allah. 
How is this fair? See, that person, they made it a habit that they only speak well, that they only speak kind. So it became a second nature to them. So that when they said it, that's just how they talk. That is just how they talk. So it became second nature to them, and they're just very kind. They're very nice in what they utter. And also because of the impact that it had on the listener. On the other hand, somebody just rude. And that became a second habit to them. Second nature. That's how they just talk. They really don't care how their words impact those who are around them. And as a result, they have earned the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. شوف يا اخوان سبحان الله والله تجميع الحسنات صعب سهر جوع عطش قيام you know the idea of collecting good deeds that's a hard work man especially in this month of Ramadan that's a lot of hard work some don't go to sleep some people don't go to work be up all night don't eat don't drink you do a good job in collecting hasanat we do that but more and equally as important in Collecting the good is also the ability to keep the good. Person who works really hard and they make a lot of money and then they squander it. People look at them and say, what are you doing, man? You worked so hard for your money. Why are you wasting your money like that? Why are you getting tickets needlessly? Why are you parking illegally? Why are you not paying on time? Like paying all these fines, all these penalties? Do you not work hard for your money? يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم do you know who is a person who is bankrupt? No, oh, Prophet of Allah bankrupt. A person who does not have any silver coin or golden coin. They're bankrupt. Said Nabi Sallallahu la la la. said that's not a bankrupt. This is not bankruptcy. This is just one form of bankruptcy. He said let me tell you about the biggest bankruptcy that will take place. يأتي الرجل يوم القيامة. Say so a man will come on the day of judgment, presenting their deeds. We talk about some mighty deeds, lots of good deeds. لكنه يأتي وقد شتم هذا ضرب هذا أخذ مال هذا اغتاب هذا فيأخذ كل من حسناته. Said so despite all the good deeds that he brought in, these are his assets, but he also comes with lots of liabilities. Curse at somebody. Backbite at somebody else, wronged somebody, unjustifiably hit somebody or used violence against somebody. So these people on the day of judgment, they will be compensated. How? Everybody takes a portion to make up for the wrong that was done to them in this life. So now he becomes absolutely bankrupt. He literally runs out of hasanat and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from this, Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah save us from this. And then what happens? Then he said, but there is, still, there is still more liability to come. So what do they start doing now? They start dumping on him from the bad deeds that they have, that they have earned. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fi hadith Abi Hurairah yaqul, atib al-kalam, afsh al-salam, at'im al-ta'am. In the hadith, the Prophet of Allah instructs Abu Hurairah to be a person who is sweet, with their speech. إخواني سبحان الله رب العالمين ما قال قولوا كلام حلو ولا قولوا كلام حسن إيش قال رب العالمين قل لعبادي يقول التي هي التي هي إيش أحسن tell my servants to only say that which is best not just speak good say that which is best وهب بن نبه كان يقول والله إنا لنتخير أطايب الكلام he said, by Allah, Wahb ibn Nabih says that we were so carefully choosing the words that we utter the same way that we choose the food that we eat. Tuba lilisanu halu. Fortunate indeed is the person that naturally speaks sweet. You know, some people, subhanAllah, Allah has given them this gift. They are naturally sweet talkers. They're just naturally nice. Doesn't take much effort on their part to do so. 
If you are that person, let me tell you, Wallah, you are a pleasure to be around. And then there are some of us, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I got sharp tongues, can be very cruel, can just destroy people with our tongue. So please, inshallah, as the month of Ramadan is coming to an end, let's pay attention. Let's become more intentional with the way that we use words. The way that we use words has an impact on those who are around us. And always remember, من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليقل خيرا أو يصمت. Let he who believes in Allah and the day of accountability only say that which is good or remain quiet. I think I told you this story before. This young man wanted to join a monastery. And when he came to the monastery, they gave him the, they gave him the, the instructions and they said, you can join our monastery, but there is one condition. For the first year, you have to be absolutely quiet. At the end of the year, you get one word. And then you have to be quiet for the next year. Then you get two words. And then you be quiet for the third year. And you get three words. And as you spend years, we increase one word every time you are here. So first year goes by, and he did not say a single word. They come at the end of the year and they said, you did very well. You get one word. What is it going to be? And the man said, hungry. So they increased his portion of food. A year passes by and they said, you did really well. You get two words now. What is it going to be? And he said, too cold. So they gave him a blanket. Now the third year goes by and they said, you did really well. You get three words now. What is it going to be? And he said, I am quitting. <laughs> so they said, you can quit. You did nothing but complain anyways. <laughs> Think about that. You did nothing but complain anyways. And if we analyze the way that we talk, we're either criticizing, psychologizing, finding faults, putting downs. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a sweet tongues. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people who are considerate with our words, Ya Rabbil Alam. Hadallahu alam sallallahu.